Uh, like, well, we're flirting with the idea of leaving you again. I know, so. but I think we should be flirting harder to keep you with us. Well, I mean, on that point, does the, does the monarchy survive long term? It's skating on thinner and thinner ice. I think we have to own it's taken a massive knock with the old Hazard and Meg. It doesn't matter if you think they're a ridiculous pair. The point is loads of young people, diverse Britain and beyond Britain shores bought into them. They were like, hey, the monarch is changing. No, guys, it's not. It's just Harry's fallen in love with a young, beautiful woman of color from America. And guess what? The fairy tale we know comes crashing down. Mm. So those kids who bought into monarchy suddenly are burnt by monarchy. They're like, yeah. it doesn't, doesn't re represent us. So previously, youthful apathy, what was youthful apathy, is now a bit of antagonism. There's sort of grit in the oyster there, 38% wanting a different system. That's the first time we've had polling like that. But can yeah. I just go back to Australia? Because what I don't get is, say, for example, there's always new music. Coronation is a big musical bonanza. Yeah. Why don't we have an Australian composer? We've got 12 British composers. That, to me, is a ball drop. You know, Prince Charles, I keep on calling him Prince Charles. King no, Charles. No, no, I'm still doing that, too. <laughs> yeah. King Charles. King Charles is honorary <laughs> page boys. Yeah. Why are they all little white English boys? He's had 74 years to work out the ki you know, who he's going to have. I mean, obviously, the kiddies yeah. today wouldn't be alive then. But I, I just wish sometimes in that intimate planning, and I know we're going to get the procession of the realms, we'll get the flags, we'll yeah. get the governor generals, but I wanted it to just penetrate a right. little bit deeper. What about a nod to the future, though? I mean, there's a new photo of Charlotte that's out this morning. It's her eighth birthday today, a photograph that was taken by Kate. Yeah. You know, yeah. the future there. Is that enough? You know, when William's yeah. king, will that change things? I think, and just the way you've asked that question with a bit of a nonchalant shrug. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it in you, Pete. <laughs> how, are gonna, how are you going to vote yeah, well, in the next referendum, yeah, eh? Yeah, well, I know, I'm not sure. I think it might <laughs> be a tight one next, week, uh, next weekend, the next referendum. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, yeah. But future. let's get back to Charlotte. I mean, I'm yeah. sure she'll come on a tour of Australia. She'll be one of the assets in the next sort of 10, yeah. 15 years, if you're still with us. Um, by the way, Charles is off to see you, I think, next year. Yeah, next year. It's not easy for him. He's going to be 75. This yeah. is a lot to ask of a seriously old man. Mm. So I think we need to cut some slack, and that's why you've got these kids. Because remember, the Harry and Meghan loss is felt keenly. It's just William and Kate and their children. That's a lot of pressure. I know you've got Anne and, and the Wessexes, but they're not big money drivers. They're not clickbait material. So there, there is a sort of thinness to the narrative if you dig down. But is that such a bad thing? The way in which our royal family, really from the 90s onwards, has hogged the global tabloid headlines, mm. it's not healthy, and I don't think it's sustainable. Okay.